At their pinnacle in the mid-2000s, Williams Trains made a complete line of O-gauge locomotives, diesels, steamers, electrics, freight cars, passenger cars, track, and all of it friendly to the budget, bulletproof, high quality. Altogether, over 100 pages in their catalog of wonderful three-rail O-gauge train items. Today, if you go to the Williams webpage, you see, well, it's a bit underwhelming. So what happened to Williams Trains? How did they go from a major player in the three-rail train market to this? Well, let's find out in this episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. In 1971, Jerry Williams founded what was then known as Williams Reproductions from his suburban Maryland home. Initially, the firm made parts and reproductions for in-demand standard gauge trains, some things that were either rare or things that were in demand just because they were popular but very expensive for hobbyists. These Williams products offered modelers and collectors a cheaper option than buying high-priced originals. Working out of his home, Jerry often used family members or neighborhood kids to help with the production of his items. One of these neighbors was a young lad by the name of Mike Wolf, who later founded MTH Trains. By 1975, Williams had expanded its mail order business to include O-gauge models. Often these were made in kit form to keep costs down. Models included heavyweight and aluminum post-war Lionel passenger cars, as well as a kit version of a GG1 and the brand new General Electric E60 electric locomotive. Later, Williams developed their own drivetrain, and this allowed them to produce models of the Trainmaster, SD45, General Electric U33C, and other models. In the early 1980s, Williams acquired the tooling for old Kusan models. This allowed Williams to expand the product line not only to complete ready-to-run sets featuring the Kusan Beep, or what Williams called the Mighty Might locomotive, but also a version of the original Auburn models F7 that was later marketed by Kusan. And this became a staple in the Williams line for quite some time. These Kusan molds also provided the basis for Williams rolling stock, including the classic AMT 40-foot boxcar. Williams added a new underframe, including a simulated air brake tank, and this is found in the models offered by Menards today that are based on these same molds. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, Williams saw another opportunity in the three-rail O-gauge market, importing a series of brass steam locomotives, highly detailed models that were meant to be operated on three-rail track. Many point to this as being very influential in the starting of the more scale movement in three-rail today. These models included desirable steam locomotives like the Penzi T1, the New York Central Scale Hudson, Camelbacks, cab forwards, and other unusual steam models. But it was in the 1990s when Williams really found their groove in the three-rail market, making a series of reproductions, mere carbon copies, of popular Lionel post-war locomotives and rolling stock. These Williams models looked very much like their original Lionel versions, but often operated in a superior fashion, having twin can motors and die cast frames, where the Lionel versions often had a single Pullmore motor and a sheet metal frame. Williams didn't limit themselves to just copying Lionel versions, but also introduced many fantasy paint schemes that Lionel could only dream of. By the late 1990s, Williams had a large stable of locomotives, from F7s to Jeep 7s and Jeep 9s, Jeep 38s, SD45s, FP45s, General Electric U33s, Trainmasters, Baldwin Sharks, Alco PAs, EMD E7 units, and a host of others, along with a complete line of rolling stock. Williams developed a reputation for producing quality products that ran well and were nice on the budget. But it wouldn't last forever, as Jerry Williams decided 
that after many years in the business, it was time to retire, and he was looking for someone to take over the business. In 2007, that someone was Bachman Trains, and Williams by Bachman was born. Bachman was an established name in model railroading, offering trains from N scale to G scale and everything in between. And so Williams fans hoped that Bachman's experience in the hobby, their extensive dealer network, and their financial resources would allow them to expand or at least continue the existing line, especially after K-Line's absorption into Lionel left an opening in the three-rail market. The first Williams by Bachman catalog did not disappoint. This 100-page catalog featured most of the previous Williams line. While there were no new locomotives or rolling stock, the diesels were upgraded with an improved sound system, and several items sported new paint schemes. Some Williams fans, however, were put off by the new soundboards, or rather the price increase that accompanied them. Many felt that the old horn and bell sounds were good enough, and their priority was keeping the price low, especially as the Great Recession began to take shape in 2008 and 2009, hitting hobby funds hard, especially those in the low-budget tier. The first newly tooled Williams by Bachman item, a scale streetcar, was introduced for the 2009 catalog, and this signaled the direction that Bachman was taking with the Williams line, creating conventional control scale or semi-scale models while allowing the traditionally side reproductions in the Williams line to dwindle away. The 2010 catalog provided a brief reprieve from this strategy as Bachman introduced new starter sets around the traditionally sized Williams Alco FA and short streamlined passenger cars. An 027 bulkhead flat also joined the line for 2010. Meanwhile, a few items received new paint schemes while other traditional Williams items were weeded out of the line. In 2011, as the Great Recession continued to stubbornly hang on, Bachman stood pat with the Williams line and no new items were added save a few new paint schemes, while more and more of the traditional Williams products vanished from the catalog. The 2012 catalog included several new items, including a scale-sized 10-wheeler steam locomotive, plus several items from K-Line that Bachman had purchased the tooling from Lionel including a return of the Keyline Super Streets, now called Easy Streets by Bachman, as well as several operating cars and motorized hand cars. Prices of these new Williams by Bachman items continued to climb, partially due to Bachman's marketing strategy to protect their local dealer network by inflating the MSRP of catalog items. The street price of these trains at many dealers was 35-45% to 45 less than the catalog price. Williams fans, however, were accustomed to ordering trains via email or mail, and Williams priced their items so that the online price and the dealer price were often identical. As a result, many Williams fans thought that Bachman was pricing their trains unnecessarily high, and these fans started to look elsewhere for new products or continued to buy on the secondary market. Still, Bachman continued to move forward with scale with a new Jeep 30 locomotive in the 2013 catalog, a sharp-looking locomotive with an equally impressive MSRP, comparable to many command control diesels then on the market by Lionel and MTH. Again, the street price of these diesels was less than advertised, but traditional Williams fans still experienced sticker shock with the new diesels. The 2014 catalog cemented the direction of the Williams by Bachman line, as the venerable Trainmaster, a staple in the Williams line since the 1970s, was no longer offered. Instead, a new scale-detailed Alco RS3 appeared in the ever-shrinking Williams by Bachman catalog. In 2015, a new scale-sized 44-ton switcher replaced the traditionally-sized 44-tonner, and new scale rolling stock appeared in the form of a new twin-bay scale hopper and front-runner trailer-on-flat car sets. Also appearing as limited-edition items was a line representing the characters of the Chuggington children's TV series. In 2016, the transformation of the Williams line was nearly complete, as a semi-scale Pacific steamer entered the line, while older Williams F7s, GG1s, Jeep 9s, Sharks, PAs, U33s, SD45s, and all traditionally sized steam locomotives were all gone from the catalog. Bachman had also made the decision to take Williams in the direction of scale-sized trains, leaving the past behind. In 2017, there was no separate Williams by Bachman catalog. 
Instead, the Williams train line occupied a few pages at the end of the regular Bachman trains catalog. New to the line were a new F-59 diesel based on K-line tooling and some new ore cars. Meanwhile, the selection of traditional Williams items shrank once more. 2018 saw the introduction of the last new Williams by Bachman diesel to date, a scale 70 ton switcher. New items since then have been limited to new models in the Easy Street line and the whimsical Eggliner self propelled passenger car introduced in 2021. Even Bachman's Facebook page shows neglect for the Williams line, as only two Williams related posts appear on the page between 2020 and September 2022. So while the Williams by Bachman line continues in the form of a limited selection of fantasy or scale items, the middle has been cut out. Nearly all remnants of the once mighty Williams trains line have been killed and buried by Bachman. Will these magnificent trains ever return? Perhaps Bachman will someday rejuvenate the line, or maybe they will sell the tooling to others who will. Certainly the success of the Menards Trains products have proven that there is still a market for traditional, dependable, budget-friendly trains in the O-Gage market. We must wait and see. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and if so, please like it, subscribe, share it, or leave a comment about your memories of Williams Trains. In the meantime, keep those trains running, and we'll see you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks.